Okay, everybody, thanks for stopping by. Today's video, we're gonna be having a look at the Jackery Explorer 300 Plus. In the little short that I did, I mistakenly referred to this as the Jackery Solar Generator 300 Plus, but it's not, and it is. If you get it on its own, so just the, the, the power bank, effectively, this unit itself, it's referred to as the Jackery Explorer 300 Plus. If you get it with a solar panel, it's the Jackery Solar Generator 300 Plus. That makes sense? I think so. Now, we are gonna have a look at this. And I was gonna take you out to the beach and charge up my metal detector and just you know show you it in use. But unfortunately, the weather looks something like this and we're in for rain for like the next week. I have had this for several weeks now and have put it through its paces, have played with it, have used it in a number of different scenarios. Had enough hands-on time to be able to do a review. Now this one has a nice little trick up its sleeve working as a UPS. If you have the power plugged into this permanently and this plugged into whatever it is you want to continue running, like a PC, a laptop, something along those lines. So if the power cuts out, this will switch over and go onto the battery within 20 milliseconds. As far as 20 milliseconds goes, that's fast enough for your PC, for example, to just continue running and not to notice the power cut. So that's an nifty little feature in this one. Now, you're not gonna be running the whole household on this. So we're gonna cover off a few things that you can do with a little 300 plus. But I wanna go and grab this 1000 Pro. I'll show you how I've been using that. And I also wanna show you uh, look, people would refer to it as a hack on the internet. I just want to show you a function of this that I've stumbled on that I think makes it really, really useful. And it's a kind of a cheap way to expand the capacity of your Jackery. Let's just duck out to the car in the rain. And you can see it's a pretty average sort of day. You can see the palm trees across the road. Um, you can barely, ah, you can see the lake out there. Um, so we're just going to the Commodore, and this is pretty much where the Jackery 1000 lives uh, for me. You can see I've got a 240 volt cable going into it at the moment because there is no sun for uh, generating solar. If we swing you around, this is the boot of the Commodore, and this is a car that goes to work with me. So this is my uh, Brass Monkey 30 litre uh, compact 12 volt fridge. It is plugged in to the Jackery here. And typically I also would have the solar panel plugged into the Jackery. And when I pull up at work, I throw it up into the windscreen. So we're not getting much power coming in, obviously from solar. I've just got it plugged into the 240 volt, which I do every now and then just to top it up. You can see we've got it plugged in. I've also got it plugged into the 12 volt socket there over the front. I'm gonna grab that 12 volt lead. Let's grab the thousand. We'll take it out to the little one, the 300. And we'll do a little bit of a comparison because I think that's relevant. So this one I think weighs, I think it was around about 12 kilos for the thousand. Uh, I want to say the 300 plus, something around about four kilos, put it up on the screen anyway. This is one of my metal detectors. This is the one that stays in the back of the Bajero. This is the Quest 60, uh, waterproof, all of the above. Now I think you'll see there's a bit of a common theme here going on with the Jackery and the Quest there as far as colours goes. So a nice little match that. I think you can see here that the little 300 plus is almost an exact miniature of the Big Daddy, the 1000 plus that we did the review on earlier. So both have the handles on top. They have the usual complement of USB outputs. So as far as outputs and displays, etc., on the screen, very similar to the 1000 plus. So you've got your regulated 12 volt cigarette lighter socket output. You've got your 240 volt AC, pure sine wave, 300 watts. Peak to 600, but I'm not sure what the time frame is on the peak. Um, I have had this running at around about 320, 330 successfully and constantly. You've got your USB A, 15 watt max, USB C, 15 watt max, and then your bi-directional 100 watt max in and out over here. We've got a 240 volt input on the side. This one will charge from 240 volt at 200 watts. The solar panel will also use this USB-C port on the front to charge with as well. Now I'll grab the connector and we'll have a quick look at that. That's one of the things that I'm not 
super impressed with. I would have preferred to have the additional input on the back like this, uh, the DC input on the back that they use for the solar panel rather than going with the USB-C. The reason I say that is because I think the USB-C, if, if the cable was just a USB-C plug on the end, I'd be happy with that, plug it straight in. But because you're going through an adapter, the amount of weight that that's gonna put on this port, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. I'll grab it, we'll have a look. Again, it all comes down to one thing for me with the jackery things that I don't like, and it all comes down to the proprietary plugs. Now, USB-C is far from proprietary, but because, <laughs> well, because no other solar panel that I've seen has a USB-C port on it, it means that you now need an adapter. This is the 80 watt bifacial, they don't call it bifacial, I can't remember what the technology they refer to it as, but this is the 80 watt solar panel that you can get with this as a kit. It's definitely gonna be the solar panel I'm gonna recommend. But the reason I'm gonna say that is I've been doing a comparison video uh, of a whole bunch of solar panels that I've got from a whole bunch of different brands. And this one has actually come out on top. Now it hasn't come out on top as far as obviously the most output uh, of a solar panel, because uh, I have, you know, 200 watt solar panels there, etc. Certainly has come out as the one that gives the closest output to the manufacturer's rating. So this solar panel here, spoiler alert for the upcoming video, is now my highest performing or best performing solar panel. So I'm very impressed with that. I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels, I love the build quality, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the little jackery. This is effectively the extension cable that comes with that 80 watt solar panel. It has its own lead, but then you have an extension lead, which goes from now you're gonna to have to follow with me here. Um, this is the 8020 output on this extension lead, which comes from the solar panel, right? That will fit directly into the back of our 1000 Pro. But if you want to use a Jackery panel with something else, you need to use this adapter. Now this adapter will go from the 8020 down to a 7919, I believe. So a slightly smaller barrel, smaller centerpiece connector. And then, when do you want to use the solar panel with the 300 plus, we need to go to the USB-C, which means you then need to plug the 7919 into that, which will then give you the USB-C output. Now, I think you can see what we've got going on here is really not a good setup. So we'll plug that in to our 300 plus, not connected so we've got no input that I can show you I think you can see that and you, look it's not a lot of weight on it but you can certainly see there is weight in that cable and frankly USB-C outputs are not meant to handle that so I really 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 let's be clear I've got no issues with having a USB-C input for solar no issues with it at all what i have an issue with is this this contraption jackery it's not good um what you probably need to be supplying look i understand supplying this plug this adapter that probably should be a mainstay with this if you're going to do the usb-c so people can plug in their other solar panels into your jackery i know you like to stay proprietary to keep it all in the house but so you probably still need to supply this if people have got old jackery panels or something like that with the 7919. But ultimately, I think what you should be supplying is, what I think you probably should be supplying is a cable adapter with just the single USB-C on the end rather than going through all these different plugs. To put that weight on the little USB-C connector, I know I'm banging on about it, but I'm, I'm really... I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. The extra 100 watt output on the front would have been nice. And if I'm honest, I love USB-C and I've got heaps of USB-C cables, but I still have lots and lots of USB-A legacy stuff running around. So it probably would have been nice to see two of those um, in addition to the two USB-Cs. What I have been doing, if I need an additional USB-A output, is I've just got one of these, just a cigarette lighter socket plug, uh, this one gives me additional USB-A. I think that was 30 watts on that one and 100 watts on the USB-C. So by simply plugging this into our cigarette lighter socket, 
we've got an additional two ports available to us there. So I've now got two USB A's, three USB C's, two USB C's at 100 watts, and we've still got a little 15 watt output on the other USB C. Now, do you remember that plug that I had that we plugged in to the front of the Jackery to give us some additional output ports? What you can do, that's just a standard cigarette lighter socket to USB C, uh, USB output. They come in many variations. Again, this one is 100 watt max, which is about the most you're going to get from a cigarette lighter socket. This is just a generic USB C charge cable, USB C to USB C. Plug it into our 100 watt output port. Plug that. <coughs> plug that into our car, and then plug that into the front of our jackery and we're now charging our jackery from the car. Charging from the USB-C is a good thing overall. I think just the jackery implementation of it going through all those different adapters lets, lets the side down. As far as charge times, 100 watts going out of this, you're not going to be seeing the 100 watts, you're probably going to be seeing closer to 90, 93, thereabouts. So that charge in the Jackery while you're driving, um, it's going to take you around about three hours, providing you've got no load on this, to top that up from start to finish. Which is around about, give or take an hour or so, with that 80 watt solar panel, full sun, ideal conditions, no loads, it's going to be around about the same time it's going to take to charge this up uh, from that. The fastest way to get this charge um, is to plug it into your AC, um, use the supplied cable, uh, plug it in, 200 watts in, you're going to charge this in about an hour and a half. We must mention battery chemistry. This is LIFO 4. So it's a safer chemistry and it's nice to see Jackery getting up to date with other things that are going on in the market. Not always the guys that bring out the latest, greatest and are leading the market, but they're a safe option. And as we said, they're kind of like the Apple uh, of solar generators in that have proprietary type plugs, they sell you a package, you take that package, you buy it, it's off the shelf, you take it home, it works. They're, they're a really safe option. They're an American option, um, and Jackery, one of the first ones to come to market with solar generators. So they've got a history there. So our capacity on this one is 288 watt hours. The 300 plus is a 22 and a half amp hour battery in it. So that's what, that's, you know, if that means more to you than 288 watt hours, that's the capacity of this unit. 300 watt inverter. You have to remember that it is limited to the 300 watts output and you're not going to be running household stuff off your 300 watts. You're not going to be taking this camping and running your 12 volt fridge overnight. You're just not. You're going to get somewhere between, say, about five and seven hours running one of your 12 volt four wheel drive fridge off this, right? Now, that's with your 22 and a half amp hour battery. Yeah, we're talking you know, a normal temperature day. We're not talking, you know, 30 plus sitting in the sun, otherwise the fridge is going to be running 24 seven and it's probably going to drain it in a couple of hours. If you want to take this to a picnic or something, you want to pull the, the fridge out of the car and you want to drag it down to the picnic table, you can do that. You're probably going to get at least five hours out of this running your fridge. Now, because your fridge will turn off and on and off and on. Now, what I've actually found is I've got a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack here or power bank. It also has a USB-C output of 100 watts. Now what I can do, if I plug this in, now you've got to do this in the right order. You have to have your jackery off, turn your battery bank on, and then plug this into your USB-C, the bi-directional port, the one where you can charge from. And what you'll actually see is your jackery will turn on. And you'll see here, it'll start to take a charge. We generally see around about, and I generally see around about 80 to 85 watts, which seems to be the standard for 100 watt output for some reason. Now we're at 90% on the battery. Um, I've done that specifically so I can show you this. You see we're now getting, you know, again, 85 watts going in, 85, 86. It's gonna take around about, you know, uh, what's that, 24 minutes to charge that to 100%. What we've got is roughly the same capacity in this as we've got in the Jackery. So we've, and what we're doing is charging the jackery from the power bank. So if I just chuck that on top, I've now doubled the capacity of my little 300 plus, but with caveats. It's only inputting around about 85 watts. Now it's gonna run 85 watts into this until either the jackery gets full or it's depleted. Now, 
if we take that and we plug that into our 12 volt fridge, if you know how the 12 volt fridges work, the compressor comes on, turns off, comes on, turns off, comes on, turns off. So they don't run at 100%. Now my, that little fridge that I showed you in the back of the Commodore out there, the work car, um, it typically runs around about 45 watts when it's cycling. <clears throat> so over the course of, you know, maybe an hour, it might use maybe half of that. So where we've you know been on average probably getting five hours out of this, you could probably look to now getting closer to 10 hours out of it. You might say, well, then why don't I just go and buy one of these? Well, we don't have a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket on that that you can plug into your fridge. So this is not gonna to work to run your fridge, but you can use it to power your jacket and then your jacket to power your fridge. This is now the fifth solar generator that I've got of various brands in that sort of 250 to 300 watt hour uh, capacity range. Now, where I find these super handy, whilst they don't have the capacity like the 1000 Pro, where I really find these handy is they're great for changing inputs to various outputs hope that makes sense for example doing exactly what we're doing here so we've got a 20 so we've got some so we've got energy stored in this battery pack but i can't run the fridge off this but if i use this to charge the jackery i can then use the jackery to run the fridge don't get me wrong very handy in charging your phones uh charging the vr headset charging my charging my metal detectors when out in the field. Basically what I do is take this along. Uh, all the boys have got their own metal detectors. There's three of us that go metal detecting. We pull up, we sit down for lunch, plug your metal detectors into this. Everybody gets a charge. They're good to go again for the afternoon. Running my telescope out in the backyard. I used to have to run 240 volt cable out to the telescope out into the middle of the yard. I don't need to do that now. 12 volt ciggy socket output will allow me to plug in the telescope direct to 12 volt. I can also plug in my gaming laptop. It has to run off AC if I want to run that. So I can also plug my laptop into this, my telescope into this, the laptop controls the telescope remotely and I'm on the whole kit and caboodle and I can do my imaging out in the backyard. One of the things that I really love this size unit for is soldering. So it's very handy to go and pick this up, plug my soldering iron on, and take it anywhere. I've got one of the little gas soldering irons, but I hate that thing with <laughs> a passion. Uh, but for my little 60 watt soldering iron, I just plug it in, turn it on, and away I go. I'm taking it anywhere I need it, and I'm soldering it anywhere I need to go. Got a number of different tools in the shed, small tools. One of the examples would be the head trimmer that I've got. Now I've got this stupid vine here behind me, which requires constant trimming. Uh, now the 240 volt head trimmer that I've got, again, normally would have to go and grab the lead, run it out of the shed, pull it out, uh, and then do that, and then wrap it all back up. Don't have to do that anymore. I just get the short little lead, I plug it into the little jackery here, I put the jackery down here, and I go and do my trimming. Now, on the front, you've only got the one 240 volt output. It's probably more realistic for the capacity and the size of the inverter that's in this, in that you're not gonna be plugging a whole bunch of 240 volt stuff into it, you're just not. Now, of course, the screen on this is a replica of the one that you've got down here on the 1000 Pro, um, albeit that it is a slightly smaller version. Nice color display here. Input, watts, and the time to full charge. Uh, output will be in watts, and then you'll also have the time to discharge to a 0%. The power button becomes your display button, where on the 1000 Pro, we actually have a display button that we would touch to turn this on and off. Uh, with this one, just tap your power button and it'll go on and off that way. Press and hold the power button to turn it on or turn it off. If you saw the review for the 1000 Pro, uh, it turned up with a 0% charge and this one did as well. So if you get one of your jackeries and you take it out of the box and it's non-responsive, you're pushing buttons and you're trying to turn things on and nothing's happening, go and plug it into the output, go and take your AC, go and take your supplied AC cord plug it into AC and then it'll walk away. Just leave it for a few hours, it'll come to life. They're just shipping them with 0% charge and I think that's because of the postal services not wanting to transport this in batteries with a charge. So three year warranty on these. Uh, and if you register, I believe on the Jackery website, you'll get an additional two years so you can get five year warranty on these. Jump on the website, have a look at that specifically. Um, but 
it does say three plus two and i think you get your additional two by registering with the website these have been my only experience with jackery thus far and i've got to say these are the quietest of solar generators that i've had yet as far as charging goes and just general usage some of the other ones that i got sound like airplanes taking off now if you've got that thing laying beside the bed which i have before and had it on charge annoying as these things and i don't know it must come down to the fan that they've got in here but both of these are super super quiet on charge and it is very rare that you hear them charging or discharging when you're using them at all now I, I i i don't like to make recommendations i literally just want to show you the product and tell you all about it and then you're big enough and ugly enough to go and make your own decision this channel is not about selling your stuff so get that out of your head straight away i'm not trying to sell it to you i don't care whether you go and buy a jackery or you go and buy something else i don't care i just want to share the information with you and then you can make the decision on your own but if I was buying the 300 and I was looking for a combo deal, I would probably go with the 80 watt bi-directional solar panel. From my testing, it's a better, I just think it's a better solar panel than the 100 watt version. It's a lot more solid and it's heavier, so you're gonna need to make the decision based on that. Now, one other recommendation that I would make is, if you're looking at a solar generator, so you're looking at the 300 plus, and maybe you're possibly considering the 1000 Pro, go with the biggest one you can get. Go with the biggest one you can afford. The bit of a price difference between the two. Keep your eye on the Jackery website. Sales on all the time. Black Friday sales, Christmas sales, New Year sales, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But my recommendation would certainly be go with the biggest one you can afford. Because I'll tell you what, the bigger they get, the handier they get, and the more useful get. That, and the more useful they get. And again, that's my experience. That's the way I use these things. Um, in my mind, if I was going for one, I'd, I'd start start as a minimum looking at the 1000 Pro. But for you, the 300 Plus Explorer solar panel. So do the 300 Plus solar generator combo. Might be all you need. I like big capacity. Now, this is the back of my four-wheel drive currently working on this at the moment but what you see down here are two battery banks now these are just diy battery banks that i've put together myself uh, if you're looking at the jackery this probably isn't something you're going to be doing but this is a diy battery pack i've got two of these now these are basically 270 odd amp hours per battery so and i've got two of those so i've got something like 560 amp hours worth of battery compared to the 22 and a half amp hours worth of battery that were in the 300 plus. So I've got over 20 times more of the capacity in the back of my forward drive compared to what you've got in that. So while that will run my induction cooker and run it for several days without a sweat, the reason I show you that massive system that I've got in the back of the forward drive is, I just want you to understand where I'm coming from as a user. I, I don't want to use the term power user, but I'm somebody that likes to use lots of power i've got my induction cooktops i've got the air fryer um and, and i like to cook and i like to fiddle with stuff i like to build my own batteries now the jackery is at the other end of that spectrum it's a off the shelf pick it up plug in your solar panel away you go you're not messing about with batteries like this you've got all your safety features built into that if something goes wrong with my battery over here <laughs> that whole car's catching on fire right and that's gonna be my fault. But when you pick up something like the Jackery Solar Generator, you've got a whole bunch of safety features built in that I simply don't have in my battery pack in the back of the forward drive. It's a risk that I'm willing to take and it's something that I enjoy doing, but I'm aware of those risks and I try and mitigate those. <laughs> when you jump into something like a Jackery, like the 300 plus that we're looking at today, it's got a mozza, I think it's something like 16 different safety features built into it. So if you don't like the sound of possibly catching your car on fire, or even worse, your house on fire, Jackery is about as safe as you're going to get. So that's it, everybody. That is the Jackery Explorer 300 Plus. Now, again, put it with a solar panel. That's the Jackery Solar Generator 300 Plus. If I was buying this, I'd be waiting for one of their sales to come up. Um, and then I'll be buying it as a package with one of their solar panels.
Again, limited in capacity. Have a look at what your needs are and then buy a solar generator appropriately sized. For me, I'd be looking at the bigger one. Thanks very much for stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. See you again. Oh, Merry Christmas. Of course, if you're ever running flat, you can always charge yourself. Wrong plug. Need USB-C. There's always the dog. 20 watts.